We're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. Practice, man. Hello, friends. I had a project here recently where I really had to push my figures in the Z dimension. And by that I mean not along the X or the Y of a flat space, but towards the viewer or pushing back into the scene, the Z dimension. And for that, I thought, for, you know, to practice for that, I thought there was no, maybe nowhere better than to go back to my old Jack Kirby, and in particular, my Jack Kirby Collector Magazines. Uh, this is something that you can always find at comic shows um, and some retailers, but best places to look online and uh, try to find them. Jack Kirby Collector Magazines. Um, this one in particular, uh, every, every issue has a variety of Kirby um, lore and interviews and artwork. This one in particular, though, has a lot of his sort of interesting figure drawing, interesting takes on figure drawing, and in particular um, about his ability to push that Z dimension. So I thought it was a good place to do a little bit of practice. And in particular, when copying Kirby, you know, there is a temptation to uh, get lost in all the rendering and uh, all of his visual effects, but I'm really just going to focus on um, trying to get the figures to look right and almost sort of do it in, in wireframe. Uh, you know, when you're practicing your own figure drawing, you have to kind of work on different things at different times. It's not necessarily a time to make beautiful drawings. You're really trying to make what the artist in front of you that you're copying uh, is doing work for you. So you see here, I'm kind of getting lost in my Kirby anatomy. And uh, in a way, getting away from what I'm trying to do. okay but uh, this area differs a little bit uh, with rendering you can further push the foot forward I think I should have made it bigger things that are closer to the camera appear darker uh, this is something that a beginning artist doesn't necessarily realize right away but unless the camera itself has a light source pointing directly at the figures which typically in television or movies it doesn't the lighting is coming from various directions or ambiently all around things that are directly facing the camera are essentially facing darkness the audience is dark if you ever go to a, uh, a TV taping of your favorite show you'll notice how dark you are and how light the stage is. So naturally anything pointing directly at you will be dark. Directly at you. Otherwise then how it's affected by the ambient light. Anyway, uh, these Kirby collectors have fantastic covers. This one is a uh, well-known Kirby pose that is in a lot of different um, a lot of different comics over the years, various characters. Let's just see if we can try to get it in basic wireframe.
pushing that um, thigh back the way he does is not easy. Hmm, let's keep going. One of the best parts about these Kirby collectors is that you can really get deep into the mind of Kirby because they reproduce the pencil pages at basically the same size that he drew them. Uh, how the hell he got a hold of this stuff, who knows? It may have been stories that um, Mike Royer, whoever was the inker, uh, photocopied before he, he inked them. And some of these panels are more or less applicable to um, caricature. But frankly, I think a pose like this would work great in a caricature setting. He's got some kind of war club, but I mean, frankly, it could be anything. And this could be all dark. And this is all dark. And again, I'm not trying to get lost in the rendering, uh, even though it's worthwhile to study exactly why Kirby makes some of the rendering choices he makes. Keep in mind, he's doing this work extremely fast, extremely fast. He's working as fast as I'm working, except he's producing this. Um, because at the end of the day, these are conventions for getting stuff done. And by getting stuff done, I mean popping this knee forward or putting this body into shadow uh, because you don't want to make any detail and it's not important. Uh, and, you know, one of the key things about illustration is to, to do what's important and leave everything else aside. Um, that's not the purpose of what we're doing here, but for the purpose of getting an effective, uh, even a, an effective wireframe, it doesn't necessarily hurt to um, to throw in a couple shadows. It's funny because although Kirby is much maligned for his hands, a blocky Kirby hand does convey the perspective effectively, you know what I mean? My messy reproduction took just as much time as doing the right one and uh, isn't, isn't as good. Here we definitely see cast shadow here, so we're not going to These pages are great. I, I can't take the time to draw all of them, but I did do some of them you know, before. And, you know, when doing copying work, which is like 80% of my practice is some form of copying or copying plus, you know, I try to make it fun and, you know, tell my own little story. This guy, instead of putting his hand here, he's climbing a mountain. Okay, that's how you make it fun. The chaos that um, he is able to portray in these panels is incredible. We're not trying to duplicate that. It's quite a challenge to try and duplicate it. It really is. To try and get the busyness 
of, um, of a good Kirby panel duplicated. You know, I'll try to do a little bit of a close up here. is really tremendous, but we're just work, working on the figure work here. This one is really good. And I think, again, would make a great caricature setup. You'd have to make the face a little bit bigger, of course, but that's fine. So you make the face occupy that area. And then it's an awesome you know, caricature, right? A lot of these panels are great. Um, uh, pages are great. Here was another one that I thought could possibly work in a caricature setting. Maybe you make the head a little bit bigger. wacky the body a little bit you still have that arm going across that's what makes the pose convincing as the arm goes across the arm, this arm is thrust up in the air and maybe you put it behind you know what I mean this is another classic Kirby pose right here it would work in a character setting but that's not what I wanted to show you with the next one. Oh yeah it was right here this last page I thought was right on topic how to creatively Kirbyfy and what he does is he sets up a um, kind of wonky two-point perspective in the sense that the um, horizon line is very very um, tilted and he constructs this figure according to the perspective line. And this is basically the figure is a, uh, is a kind of a silver surfer type dude. But it's worthwhile trying to copy it. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. It can be a fist is my point. It could be a battle axe. Would have been a better example. Um... I lost the anatomy here, of course, uh, but basically that's the idea, I think. All right, listen, Kirby Collector Magazine, there's a lot here to practice. Uh, I flagged these pages that I thought would be great practice. Uh, not because the poses aren't wonky, the poses are wonky, but if you can make these poses work with your own anatomy with your own style um, then you have a fun start to, to your own artwork you know uh, they definitely pop at the viewer and that's something you want to try to achieve thank you for um, commenting on the videos and everybody who has left um, messages and uh, likes I really appreciate it subscribe um, keep giving me feedback and most of all Happy drawing.